All right, my friends, this is a bonus video for you guys uh, because I know a lot of you when you're first starting out, restaurants is a great option for you to get your name out there and also just to get some experience. So I really high, highly recommend uh, that you try it out, that you get your feet wet. So if you're needing some experience, try out a restaurant, just ask different local restaurants in your areas uh, and you know, ask ones that are more family friendly because you really wanna get the type of clientele they're gonna love getting balloon animals. You know, if they're parents with you know, two, three, four kids, that's gonna be prime for you. And once again, great experience, great way to market yourself. So I'm gonna give you some tips and ideas on a, a good way to go about working at restaurants. All right, so firstly, I want to kind of help you guys out a little bit just from the very beginning, because if you don't have somewhere to go, um, it's gonna be difficult to do it because you need an actual establishment where there's people coming in the door so you have clients to work with and to come up to and see if they want balloons. So that's really the first part of this is to find a restaurant that you can be working at that's gonna be a good fit for you and it's also gonna be a good fit for the restaurant itself because you want them to benefit from your services and you wanna be benefiting um, from theirs as well. So just a couple of thoughts here on how to find a restaurant in your local area. So here you're gonna have to do a little research. Just go ahead and search on Google, you know, you know, find maybe even on memory of different places you've been, you know, go ahead and decide where you're willing to go as far out to. So in your local area, if you're one of willing to drive, you know, a half hour from where you are, just kind of get that area um, figured out and then look up all the different restaurants in that area. You can go to like Yelp because they have a bunch of restaurants on there. Look them up, you can go to do like your maps. I know on my phone I have like a map section. I can look up restaurants and a bunch of them pop up everywhere. So you can look at them that way. Or you know, just type in like best family restaurants on Google, you know, in um, San Bernardino or in um, Chicago or wherever you are. Look up those different restaurants and then just kind of feel out which ones would be good. And then go ahead and start contacting those people. So you have to do a little bit of research. You have to figure out, you know, who are the right people, figure out what managers you might want to call. Um, if it's a smaller restaurant, you might be contacting the owner, but you obviously need to talk to that person to get permission. And this can be a little challenging. I know in the beginning, it's hard to find that right restaurant. You have to have some sort of connection usually, uh, but do what you can. You know, if you know somebody that knows somebody that is a manager at a restaurant, try to talk to that person, see if you can get your foot in the door, but it's really helpful. It's a great way to start out. So that's just some thoughts for you. Um, just do the hard work up front do the research, find those places, and build a good relationship with that person. And just, you know, go to them in person too, because if you just call them and say, hey, I'm wondering if I can do balloon animals at your restaurant. If they're kind of, if it's kind of just off the wall, it's sort of like from left field, they're not really thinking about it, they're gonna be like, balloon animals? No, I don't, I don't wanna do that, you know, just that's not what I'm trying to do here. But if you go to them in person, maybe you set up an appointment first, or you just walk in and you say, hey guys, like, you know, they can see you face to face, they know you're a normal person and that you have a great skill to offer and you have awesome balloon animals and you can just show them like, this is what I can do for them, uh, for people coming in. But you know, a lot of times there's a certain time of the week that's gonna be ideal for them to have you come in. So maybe it's just gonna be every Sunday morning, you know, or Sunday evening or Saturday morning or Friday night or whatever it is. Like this is a key time that we're gonna have a lot of Families coming in, we'll kind of make an event out of it. You can come in and then have your set hours. I do recommend that you're gonna be saying to people, I'm at this restaurant from this time to this time. And if you have that ongoing and you're consistently going to that restaurant at that time, people are gonna to wanna to come back for you. They're gonna to wanna to come back because they know that you are there You know, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. every Saturday. Um, and in the future, as you start booking more gigs, you're gonna to have to figure that out because you don't wanna turn down private events. So when you get to that point, you'll have to transition over um, and all that. But I recommend in the beginning, try to stay consistent as much as you can because you don't wanna be flaky. <laughs> Sorry. You don't wanna be flaky. You don't want to um, you know, go in and say, hey, I'll be here every single week at this time. And then the third week comes in, you're like, eh, I'm not gonna come in. And believe me, I know that that temptation is real because you're not technically working for them. You don't have a boss telling you that you have to go in. So make sure that you are your own boss and that you're being in some ways a disciplinary boss for yourself. And you're saying, 
no, you have to go, you committed to this, you're gonna do it. So as long as you can, try to stay committed to doing something regularly at a restaurant. Okay, so once you're locked into a restaurant um, and they've agreed to allow you to come in maybe once a week or for the weekend, whatever it is, um, here's some ideas for you on how to actually generate some income while you're at the restaurant. So there's a little bit of finesse to this one and it does depend on where you're at and how they formatted the seating and all of that. Um, is it a place that people order and then they go and sit down? Or is it a place that has um, waiters and waitresses where they're coming to the table? So that's gonna kind of play into this a little bit. But the key thing is, is you wanna make sure your timing is right. So for example, if they're going up to the counter, they order their food, they go sit down and the food comes to them and they're not really talking to any waiters or waitresses for the rest of the time. This is actually a little easier because you're not having to kind of time it in between that person. So you wanna time it in a way that maybe they just ordered and they go sit down and they're waiting for their food. That's an ideal time for you to step in and to provide some entertainment for them and to say, hey, I've got some great balloon animals. Would you guys like some while you're waiting for your food? Because typically it's gonna take five, 10 plus minutes for them to get their food. So there's some downtime there. And this is also a good time as well if there are waiters and waitresses coming to the table. You just need to time it in a way that you, you don't wanna get in their way. That's a huge thing when you're at a restaurant is try not to be you know going right when they're about to go or you don't wanna step over them or talk over them. You don't wanna go up to the table when they're already addressing um, the table themselves because they're the priority, it's their establishment, they're making money off the food they're selling to the people first and foremost. So um, you wanna time it right, but a lot of times a good time to go is either right after they ordered while they're waiting for their food or after they've been eating for a while. That's also a good time, it's kinda of later on. Give them some time to eat. You don't wanna come up to the table right when they get their food because they're focused on eating their food. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I go to a restaurant, I'm hungry. When I get the food, I just wanna eat. And if someone comes up to me, even if it's the server and they say, would you like anything? I typically will say, no, I'm fine because I wanna be eating my food during that time. So give them 10, 15, 20 minutes. You can kind of feel it out and sort of watch the tables without being creepy. You know, don't stare at them, but sort of keep an eye on the tables and get a sense of when they're ready. You know, maybe they're gonna be getting their dessert soon or they finish their meal and they're starting to clear the plates, you know you have them for a little bit longer. You don't wanna wait too long because it's time for them to pay the check and then they're leaving. You want them to be sitting there long enough, they're gonna want the balloons. Because if you come too late, then they're gonna say, oh, we already finished, like we're about to leave, we're gonna leave in like a minute, we have a movie to catch, we're going to the mall, we're going to the park. They have that next activity that they're going off to. So that's some ideas of how you can time yourself um, whether or not they go up to order and sit down or if there's servers involved or not. So as far as interacting with um, that person that's sitting at the table, that family or that child, it's really important that you're being very professional and that you're looking people in the eyes and that you're being um, just very polite and sincere. So when you go up to them, they're not necessarily expecting you. Unless you've been there for a while and they kind of know that there's balloon animals, or maybe you've done a couple other tables and they see it and they want it, you know, that's another story. But if you're coming up for the first time and they're just not kind of ready for it, they don't know there's balloon animals happening, that can kind of take people off guard and they're, they're just not expecting it. So you want to go up to them and sort of like help to segue to that. So you can say, hi guys, like my name is Joey. I'm so glad you're here. You know, maybe make some small talk. How's the food? Like, I love this one. Is that what you got? It's one of my favorites. Make a little bit of small talk, ask about them, how they're doing. And usually it's pretty obvious that you're doing balloon animals because, you know, I wear the apron and I have a bunch of balloons. So they already know by seeing you that that's what you're doing. But you want to kind of segue into, hey, like, I'm here to make balloon animals for people if you want some, you know, and don't pressure them too much. This is not, you know, you're not doing car sales. You're not going up to them to try to get them into their next balloon animal right away. Uh, but you do want them to buy, so you can just offer a balloon animal and, and say, hey, would you guys like any balloon animals? And then I like to give some suggestions so they kind of know what it means. Because I've noticed that in general, when people think of balloon animals, if they're not familiar with it, and a lot of people are not, they just think of like a simple sword, a simple dog, and maybe a flower. That's kind of like what's in their mind of what balloon animals are. 
you know, but the fact of the matter is, is you can probably make some way more complicated and way more impressive designs, especially if you're going through all the tutorials I have for you. So you can tell them, hey, I can make you like this awesome T-Rex, I can make a butterfly, I can make a monkey in a tree, or maybe a fish on a fishing pole or a sea turtle. So you can give them a couple options and kind of whet their appetite um, and get them excited about it. Um, another note on this is you do want to make some suggestions, but don't make too many suggestions. If you tell them, you know, 10, 15 different animals, then they're going to be kind of confused and it's just going to be an overload. And because there's so many decisions to make, then maybe they'll just say no and pass on it. So if they decide to go ahead and get the balloon, um, you know, go ahead and make them the balloon, pass it on, and just make sure being engaging and talking with them. And if you're just starting out, it's a little bit more challenging. I get that. I know when I first started, I worked at a restaurant uh, and it was really helpful for me to gain experience. It was probably the best thing that I could have done to get better at balloon animals because I'm there in front of somebody and the pressure's on, I'm making it for them. And I realize it's hard when you're first starting out to focus on making the balloon and then also engaging with that person, uh, whether it's the kid or the parents or both. So as you get more experience, you know, try to engage with them, talk with them, make jokes, um, and just really um, show them that you care because that's even more important than the actual balloon animal experience, uh, the balloon animal itself. You want to deliver an experience more than just a product that's really cool. So as far as uh, how you're going to charge at the table when you're at a restaurant, we did talk about this a lot uh, when we went through the pricing setup. So how to price yourself in the setting up your business module. Uh, but I'll point it out again to you here is a couple options is you can um, either charge per balloon or if you want, you can suggest um, tips or donations or whatever you want to call it. So there's a couple options there, but make sure you clearly communicate that because if they think it's free and it's just complimentary, maybe they think it comes with the meal. If you're just there making balloons and you've worked out some sort of deal with the manager or owner of the restaurant, um, you wanna make sure that they know, hey, this is not free, it's not extra, but maybe the restaurant's paying you. If that's the case, then it is free for the customer, um, but usually you're gonna wanna charge them something. So make sure they know that it's clear before they even get their balloon animal. And a couple of suggestions for you here is basically just to say, hey, it's this one set amount, this is what it's gonna be per balloon, or you can do a deal. If there's three kids, sometimes what I would do is I'd say, yeah, it's five bucks a balloon, but I'll do three balloons for $10 or for $12. Kind of throw them a little deal since they have multiple kids. Or you can go the tip route where you say, yeah, like it's just, you can get whatever you want per balloon, um, just go ahead and I'll make those balloons for you. And then sometimes people will give you 10 bucks, 20 bucks. And you'll be surprised. A lot of times you make quite a bit of money if you're doing tips, but sometimes you don't. It sort of evens out, um, but you can choose what you want to do, either charge per balloon or collect tips. So another thing to think about is when you're connecting with that uh, restaurant owner or the manager, the person that's your point of contact there, is you want to make sure you set the terms. So maybe they're totally cool with you just coming and then you don't pay them anything, they don't pay you anything. But maybe there's a situation where maybe they wanna pay you a little bit of money to be there for a special event, but then you're also collecting money from each customer. That's just something you wanna think about going into it. Or sometimes some restaurants may want to charge you because technically you're working on their real estate. You know, they've already attracted these customers, they're selling something to them, and then you have this add-on you're coming in. So in, sometimes you might have to pay a certain percentage. So think about that as well. As well, What are you willing to pay? Are you willing to pay like 10%, 5% of all your profits? But you just need to figure out those terms and make sure that's negotiated with the restaurant owner um, that you're working with or manager. All right, that was some thoughts for you guys on how to actually do balloon animals at a restaurant. I hope it was helpful. And one thing I didn't mention I wanted to bring up too is I talked more about what it would be like to go table to table and how that looks and how you can do it. Um, but in some cases, they might just have you set up in one area and that might be really nice too. So that's something else to think about when you're negotiating uh, with a point of contact at that restaurant. You could have your own little spot, maybe it's near the door where people are coming in and out and that, that might be helpful for them so you're not getting in the way of the servers. But a lot of times you are able to go up to the tables and that's what we talk through. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, what are you guys doing with this? If you are new to balloon twisting, uh, like I said, I highly recommend this. 
So, you know, what are some questions you might have for me on doing balloon animals at a restaurant? So go ahead and um, ask me those questions, give me those comments in our group, and we can talk further about it. So thank you guys so much for watching this bonus video.